Today, I will be reviewing the town of Magdala. In the first century, Magdala was a very important fishing village located on the coast of the Sea of Galilee and just north of Tiberias. Now, can you really have a fishing village without a market? Of course not. These are the spots where they would place the day's catch so people could purchase. Here are some of the residential areas. Magdala is believed to be the hometown of Mary Magdalene, although the Bible never says. Mary was a devoted follower of Jesus and had seven demons cast out of her by the Messiah. In Luke chapter 8, verse 2, And also some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases, Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had come out. She is also recorded by all four Gospels to have gone to the tomb after Jesus arose. Matthew chapter 28, verse 1, After the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. The only time this town was mentioned in the Bible is right after Jesus fed the 4,000 in Matthew chapter 15, verses 38 and 39. Now those who ate were 4,000 men besides women and children. And he sent away the multitude, got into the boat, and came to the region of Magdala. Some translations use Magadan in verse 39. One of the most impressive finds here was the synagogue that dates back to the first century. This is one of the oldest synagogues uncovered and one of seven that have been identified as being active while the temple was still standing in Jerusalem. Now, the Bible does not record Jesus doing anything here, but it is highly probable he frequently came here based on the scriptures mentioning that he taught in the synagogues everywhere he went. Mark chapter 1, verses 38 and 39. Jesus replied, Let us go somewhere else to the nearby villages so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. So he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. And in Matthew chapter 4, verse 23, Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness among the people. Now, as you enter the synagogue, you enter a room called the Bet Midrash. This is where they would study the Hebrew scriptures. They would take a scroll and lay it on top of this stone called the Bema, and then proceed to analyze and teach the Torah or other sacred scrolls. On the right side of the Bet Midrash is a room with partial remains of a beautiful fresco still intact. It is believed to be the room called Aron Kodesh, or the Torah Ark, which is where all the scrolls of scripture would be stored. In the back, you can still see the part of the floor with mosaics dating to the first century. Some believe this was made around 40 AD, meaning it would have been completed after Jesus died, rose, and ascended. But regardless if Jesus walked on this particular floor, it is still very beautiful. Where Jesus would have definitely stood was in the main part of the synagogue. Here is where a rabbi would teach. No doubt Jesus would have stood here and taught while roughly 100 to 150 people would have been seated around him. This stone you see here is the Magdala stone. Similar in size to the Bema stone located in the Bet Midrash. This one, though, only a replica, is sitting in the exact location where the actual Magdala stone was found when it was excavated in 2009. This stone is considered one of the biggest finds in Israel. It is basically designed to represent the second temple in Jerusalem. It's highly, highly probable that whoever sculpted this actually had been to and even been inside the temple. This, to me, is super fascinating. On the front, you can see two pillars and a menorah. This menorah is believed to be what the menorah in the temple looked like. It's the oldest ever depiction of a menorah recovered. And here on the side are four pillared archways, which were also on the opposite side of the stone. Now, I didn't get the best view, but on top is a six-petaled rosette with an additional six petals circling it. You can see what it looks like here on the sign entering Magdala. It's possible it represents the 12 tribes of Israel. It was stated by historian Josephus that the veil going into the Holy of Holies was decorated with flowers. So perhaps that is why this was chiseled on top of this stone. And here is the actual Magdala stone. It was in museums and toured around the world for a while, but it is back home where it sits in this glass case. On the back of the stone to me is the most interesting part. These wheels depict the bottom of the chariot or God's throne, and underneath is the fire. This whole side is believed to be symbolizing the presence of God and the deepest part of the temple in the Holy of Holies. This is very similar to what Ezekiel described in Ezekiel chapter 1. 
Now, when I found out we were coming here, I wasn't expecting much because I haven't really heard much about Magdala. But just like multiple times on this entire trip to Israel, I was genuinely and pleasantly surprised by visiting Magdala. This concludes my short review of Magdala. I hope you found it very interesting. On my next review, I will take you to the Jordan River. Now, this review is going to be a little different than my previous eight reviews, as I will be sharing my testimony as to why I felt led to get baptized a second time in my life. But until then, thank you for watching, and a special thank you for those who have subscribed to this channel. It is an honor to have you. God bless everyone.